Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcast, the newsroom for telecoms and data center professionals. I'm Jean-Marc Slim and joining me today is John Claes, owner of TC on Green over in Belgium. John, thank you so much for talking to us. How are you doing? Thank you, Joao. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm doing very well. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, look, your work revolves pretty much all around sustainability um, in the data center space, not just in Europe, but even beyond Europe. How would you describe the current state of the market when it comes to, to sustainability? Um, are we on a journey to really be green by 2030? Okay. Well, I think, um, you know, after a decade of uh, uh, preparation, you know, with the uh, European Code of Conduct, for example, uh, also a little bit of lip service and, you know, creative marketing, I think we have finally entered the decade of actions, uh, you know, all the way up to uh, 2030. And I think um, the reason for that is really coming from three vectors. Uh, one of them is consumers, customers. Um, they all indicate that they are looking or demanding uh, sustainable products and services. Uh, I think there was a survey uh, done by 451 uh, indicating that the number one driver for collocation operators uh, to implement sustainability and efficiency solutions is really customer demand. So that's the first one. Um, the second vector I would say is um, competition. I mean there's a lot of big names Microsoft but uh, let's you know let's say all the hyperscalers in general are really leading the pack and uh, that obliges the rest to follow and I think these companies uh, realize that uh, in order to become sustainable you know as in survivable you need to act sustainably as well so that's a, a second uh, driver. And the third one, maybe the most important one, is legislation and, and government uh, mm. action. And of course, here in Europe, we had uh, the European Green Deal in, uh, in, was it, 2019, which is really setting the benchmark for the industry towards carbon neutrality uh, in 2030. So I think those three uh, things have uh, made sustainability uh, a hot item. It's really... Um, table stakes instead of nice to have. And uh, this is where we are. Hmm. I, I think the policy point is very important because uh, we are really now seeing governments stepping in, especially in Ireland. Um, we've seen it a couple of weeks ago, um, quite a few data centers almost being put on hold um, over power. <laughs> our, exactly. words, our concerns. That's interesting. And actually, as we were just talking, just had a notification coming in from KTS, um, who's just published the third annual sustainability report. So, I mean, it's a hot topic. Everyone is talking about it. Um, but speaking exactly. of operators and not just the Microsofts and the Googles of the world, um, companies like KTS, Equinix, Digital Realty, and then even the boutique data center players, what would you say is the, um, is the biggest mistake or the one thing they are not really looking at properly when it comes to, to say sustainability? Because as you said, this is no longer about, it's a nice thing to have, it's something that you just need to get on with. Um, but what's going wrong still? Well, I think the, the, the danger is um, that sustainability is maybe considered um, too much of an isolated topic and um, that, that operators might lack, you know, the holistic, the system view of things. So um, in the past 10 years, you know, we had, as I said, uh, the EU code of conduct, uh, there was some focus focus done with, with the PoE number and that was it. Uh, I think we're now beyond the stage that that is sufficient. Uh, it's not enough to have a good PUE. Mm. It's not enough to have 100% renewable energy. I mean, it's, it's applaudable, but it's not enough. It, uh, we need to look at, at the data center from a holistic point of view, like an ecosystem, a little bit like, like the nature-based systems. It's an interconnected ecosystem with inputs and outputs. And um, yeah. I think that's uh, that's a danger that it's not being looked at uh, holistically enough. Um, the second one I can think of is, and it's it's linked to the first one, is the fact that operators are missing out on the IT part uh, and specifically the software part because um, in the past we've been focusing very very much on the building and maybe not enough on the reason why the building data center building is there, which is the IT load. And 
I know, um, yeah, most co-location operators will argue that, okay, the IT equipment is not their responsibility, it's their customers. But nevertheless, I think we should, we should break that barrier and have more interconnectivity, more cooperation. Uh, and I think there's even an opportunity for colos to, to provide additional services in that space by looking at things like, um, you know, virtualization of servers and, and, and virtual machines, uh, idle server detection, and uh, most importantly, uh, software. Uh, there's an immense potential for uh, green software engineering. Uh, there was a report also recently indicating that you could save up to 35% of energy by having a green uh, energy efficient design. And um, luckily that's also being picked up by the industry with the uh, Green uh, Software Foundation. But nevertheless, uh, I think IT and software is the elephant in the room when it comes to you know sustainability. So that's the second one. And the third one I can think of is, um, yeah, is greenwashing. <laughs> it's, it's never completely uh, off the table. I mean, as I said, the industry has been created with PUE numbers in the mm -hmm. past. Uh, you now see this, uh, you know, plethora of uh, programs around carbon neutrality, uh, net neutral. It's not always clear what the operator's focus is, uh, what the scope is, uh, how, how funded this program is. And I think uh, there's, a, there's a bit of a danger that it's again, uh, overshooting and uh, yeah, not going to, to the real fundamentals, which is, as I said before, it's looking at uh, reducing the emissions. So it's a net zero uh, objective we have. And this is for the whole value chain. So not only the use phase emissions like, you know, scope one and two, but also most importantly, the embedded carbon, the scope three emissions for the value chain. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really a, some way to go to, to you know, to map that um, uh, carbon footprint. So yeah, th there's a bit of a danger that we um, are, are using those terms lightly. So I think those are three interconnected, but important uh, observations. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I think there are really good observations because, I mean, picking up on the last one, for example, scope one, scope two, scope three, um, we've only really just seen Equinix um, recently announce a strategy to track down um, carbon through the different scopes. Because before yeah. it was always about we just buy green energy or just building a solar power farm or something. It's never down to the detail, down to the supply chain, down to all the elements within the data center and to building and running of a data center um, yeah. and also all the employees. And on the software side, I think it's also a good point because actually there's this, um, I'm going to call it an organization, I think it is an organization, a non-profit organization um, based in Amsterdam or at least in the Netherlands, um, SDIA, which oh, their yeah. work yeah. is basically just coding for data centers to make the data centers greener um, exactly. from a software, software perspective. And they've been getting a lot of traction um, yeah. from things like digital realty interaction and everything. So we are seeing the needle moving slightly, but probably not as fast as we would need to. And I mean, we are in 2021, so we've got <laughs> exactly. <and> to go. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said in the beginning, it's really the decade of action. Uh, it's you know enough <laughs> enough of the let's say of the small talk. It's it's uh, actions, and I mean there are actions out there. There's also the uh, the climate neutral data center pact, which is a very mm -hmm. important initiative, which is also moving beyond PUE, looking at other metrics, water and and, and circularity of of heat and and IT equipment. It's still a work in progress, but a, a very uh, an important initiative. So I, I think, in in summary, we need to re, you know be ambitious enough about sustainability. Hmm. And uh, there's one uh, famous, at least, well, in Belgium and Europe, uh, biologist. Uh, she wrote a book about natural intelligence, and she said, um, sustainability today is just about managing the dysfunction. And I think that's right. It's, 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 you know, isolated solutions. I think the ambition should be to look at the whole uh, ecosystem from end to end uh, holistically. And this is also actually where OCP and uh, open uh, innovation can play a very important role. Yeah. yeah. It, it's really tracked the issue from beginning to end, not 
put on the issue to another person or another company or part yep. of the industry. Um, exactly. But speaking of tracking the issues, I mean, DC on green, tell us about DC on green. Where did the idea come from? Um, I think, I mean, I think that's quite obvious where it came from for the need of it. Um, but what does DC on green do? Um, what are you working on and what's the, the, the plan for the near future? Okay. Yeah, so my personal background is really, uh, well, about 30 years in total, uh, if I add everything up. It's uh, 20 years in telecom and IT, uh, and then the last 10 years in data centers, uh, design and build on data centers. So uh, that really comes together uh, in, the, in the current uh, venture, which is DC on Green, and which is all about uh, the combination of data centers and sustainability. And the name is coming from, from that uh, yeah, play of words. Hmm. DCs needs to be on all the time. There's no arguing about that, but it needs to be done in a, in, in a sustainable way and it is possible today. So um, the mission of DC on Green is really about um, creating or co-creating uh, a sustainable digital infrastructure and assisting uh, data center operators with their sustainability roadmap. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's two tracks. There's uh, one track is more consultancy, uh, for example, BREEAM uh, assessment of, of new build data centers uh, environmental assessment. Uh, and the other one is um, sustainable solutions and, and products uh, where I really, where we act as a sustainability integrator. And uh, one good example there is, is EcoSense, which is a partner and which is, uh, which has a product about cooling, cooling optimization. Mm. Uh, it's based on artificial intelligence. So again, linking everything in the software layers and the mechanical infrastructure. Uh, so it's based on an AI engine with smart sensors and it will um, save on average 30% on the cooling energy. So that's one of the partners I work with and there's, there's a couple of others. And, and they do love a bit of augmented reality as well. They use a lot of virtual and augmented reality. Oh yeah, um, it's like uh, a gaming adventure. I mean, it, yeah. <laughs> I remember, I think I tried it when they launched a few years ago and it was quite, it was quite something. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's very uh, intuitive and... Uh, Intrusive, as they call it. Yeah. Um, but Ron, um, if people want to get to know more about DC on Green and the work you're doing, if they want to reach out, where could people go? Uh, where could our viewers get more information? Well, there's the website, of course, dcongreen.be. Uh, I think .eu should work as well. Um, what's information on the, uh, as I said, consultancy services, some of the solutions I provide, also some blog with uh, you know uh, recent uh, clips of, of news. And then, of course, there's the LinkedIn page, uh, which is also uh, update both my personal and, and company uh, page. Yeah, well, I have seen some of your blogs and they are very good reads. So <laughs> people should All definitely right. read them. <laughs> um, but thank, Cohen, you. thank you so much for your time for joining us as well. Um, and thank you, our viewers, for tuning into JSA TV and JSA podcasts. And don't forget to check out our social channels for more content. And until next time, happy networking. Thank you. Thank you.